up and running with Blender. Welcome to lesson two, the basics of the user interface. When you start up Blender you'll see the default screen along with the splash screen which when you click on it will go away. This will reveal the five main areas of the user interface that we're going to look at. We'll start off with the middle area, the 3D viewport, and you'll spend a lot of time modeling and animating here. Each time you create a new Blender project, the 3D viewport shows the default cube in the center, the camera to the left with the black triangle above it, and a lamp shown by a black spot and two circles. In the exact center of the 3D view, there are three features all piled together. These are the 3D cursor, the object manipulator, and the object center. The 3D cursor is the black crosshair with a white and red circle and this is where new objects would be inserted into the viewport. You move it by simply clicking the left mouse button, and you can add a few objects in different places to get the idea. The object manipulator starts off as a red, green and blue axis, plus another white circle. Clicking and dragging within the white circle will move the object. You can switch the manipulator between different modes by selecting the different buttons at the bottom of the screen here. This is basically translate, rotate and scale. Finally, there is the orange circle in the middle of the cube, which, dis which defines its center, but is in fact just a reference point. This can be the pivot point for rotations and so on. One final thing to note in the 3D view towards the bottom left of the area, you will see a red, green and blue labeled X, Y, Z axes. These can give a handy quick reference to see how the viewport is oriented as you work and we'll see how to change the orientation soon in the course. Next up, I'll look at the timeline, which is near the bottom of the screen. This is an area that you can use for scrubbing through animation sequences, either by using the playback controls or simply clicking and dragging with the mouse. Then on the left, the far left of the Blender window is the tool shelf. The available tools will vary depending on what you're actually doing. So here we can see translate, rotate and scale, which would allow us to move or spin the cube in addition to using 3D manipulators to move or spin the cube, which we saw when we were introducing the 3D view. You can toggle the tool shelf visibility by making sure that your mouse is in the 3D area and pressing T on the keyboard. On the far right is the buttons window. Many powerful features are accessed through the buttons window, such as motion constraints, particle systems, and more basic features such as world conditions like sky color, camera properties, materials, and textures. Finally, the object properties area doesn't show by default, but if you put your mouse in the 3D viewport and press N on the keyboard, you can toggle it on. This area shows the relevant properties for the selected object. So for our cube, for example, we can see and edit the location and rotation. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll this area if there's not enough space to show all the options.